yes <coughs> Hello, welcome to India's most comprehensive e-learning platform Baiju's Exam Prep. On this evening, we all have gathered together to discuss one of the very important section in control system. Of course, as you all know, currently we are discussing the third lecture in champion series. So far, I have already conducted two lectures. One is on the basics as well as time response analysis and in the very previous lecture, I have clearly explained the concepts related to the route array as well as the root locus. In fact, many of you really enjoyed when I am connecting the analog electronics and circuit theory and control system, all these three subjects. Of course, that is the way you must actually learn the subject. Okay. So, good evening, passion of heart. So, please let me know whether audio and video quality both are clear to you. Are you able to hear my voice? Every one of you, are you able to hear me my voice or not? So, if you are able to hear my voice, Please respond to me so that I will continue the class. Otherwise, if any technical issues, let's first fix that. After that, we will move ahead. Clear? So, well. <coughs> right? Yes, yes. Very good. Nice. So, let's drive into the class. Yes, Nikhil Jain. Uh, very good evening to you. And fortunately, we are having the class at 6 p.m. Unlike the usual timing of 9 p.m. But however, let me complete whatever I want to complete in control system part as many of the students regularly asking me what is the connection between the root locus and gain margin and phase margin because in gate syllabus obviously you will be studying everything individually right so at fundamental level you doesn't know what is the connection between that but I am here to explain what is the connection between all these things such that a single method is sufficient to answer any question related to any method clear so, well, sir, this session is related to theory or questions, only questions, only question, pat, uh, I mean, passion of art, as I am saying, you will really love it, okay. So, moving ahead, before going to the third lecture on frequency response analysis, as well as the stability criteria, first, let me quickly introduce about myself to the people who are new to the channel, myself, Panindra, all put together, I have an experience of 12 years and up to now, I have guided more than 50,000 students all across the country in the subjects of circuit theory, control system and industrial instrumentation. So, without any further delay, let's get into the topic. As I was repeatedly saying that we are here to discuss about these two topics because the rest of topics are already completed in the previous two lectures. In case if anyone missed the lectures, I suggest please go back to the previous lectures and get the complete concept out of this. And now we are going to discuss about frequency response plots followed to that the stability analysis especially gain margin and phase margin how gain margin and phase margin are related to the plots as well as the root locus also clear so shall i start nickel jain right so let me start with the first question in fact many of you might already have a clear idea about this question but i just want to go one step beyond this okay right so find the gain margin and phase margin for the controller gain, uh, let me take 1 instead of 3. So, let me take 1 because the numbers will be very easy. Okay. So, 1 comma 6 comma 10. So, once I complete this particular, you know, calculations, ultimately you will really understand the basic math behind that. Okay. So, let us get into the topic. So, what is K is called here? K is called as a controller gain. Of course, it is 1 by S into S plus 1 into S plus 2. This is called as a plant transfer function and this is called as a controller gain. Of course, you all can see that the unity feedback system here. So, therefore, H of S is equal to 1 here. Correct? So, what is going to be uh, the open loop transfer function here? Can you tell me here? So, the open loop transfer function I can say G of S into H of S all put together here. So, right now these two are in product. So, therefore, I can say these are as all put together here. Once again, all put together. When I combine these two, then it looks like K divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 2 of course h of s is equal to 1 correct 
So before going to the calculation of gain margin and phase margin, I just want to ask a question. Can we draw the root locus plot for this one? So we will see what will happen if I draw the root locus plot so that you will going to understand in the later part what is the connection between the root locus plot and gain margin and phase margin. Okay. So look at that. <laughs> if I take the open loop transfer function all the way as g of s is equal to h of s, it already included the k. So therefore I can keep k here. So k divided by s into s plus 1 and s plus 2. Now, if I ask you to draw the root, uh, I mean root locus, what must be done first? So, first you have to take the S plane here. So, let me take the S plane here. Of course, this is sigma and you all know that this is going to be considered as a minus sigma and this is J omega, of course, no doubt and this is going to be minus J omega, isn't it? So, where should I place the poles here? How many poles are there first of all? Can you respond here? Nikhil, how many poles are there here? So, there are three open loop poles here, right? So, one pole is at origin here, of course, and the second pole is definitely it is at minus 1 here, right, and the third pole is at minus 2 here, correct. So, three poles are there, so it is a easy, easy question, probably many of you already solved this question. However, I want to ask a question, what is the way how the root locus looks like here? So, you can understand that the root locus plot all the way, it comes like this, from this, the root locus branch all the way, it comes like this, after that they will meet together here. And this is considered as a breakaway point and then I am very sure that it will going to break away from here as the angle of asymptotes is equal to plus 60 and minus 180 of course odd multiples of 60 degrees. This is the way how the root locus plot is there, correct? So already I have discussed the, even in the yesterday class also. Now I will connect this root locus plot as I was saying to the gain margin and phase margin just to give me two minutes of time, okay, right. So, I want to ask a question here, of course, this root without any doubt it will go to minus infinity, so you need not to worry about this one. Can you please tell me, by looking at this, what is the imaginary, what is the gain at imaginary crossover frequency? I repeat, what is the gain at the point where the root locus branch is cutting the imaginary axis? Can you tell me what is going to be the gain here? So, if you ask the same question, very fundamentally what we can say? We will going to consider the characteristic equation. So, the characteristic equation is 1 plus g of s into h of s that is equal to 0. Of course, if you rewrite this one, we all know that it will going to become like s into s plus 1 into s plus 2 plus k. Of course, that would be equal to 0. And if you move ahead, then it will become like s cube plus 3 times of s square plus 2 times of s plus k is equal to 0. Correct? And if you replace s is equal to 0, yes, Arvind ready, good evening, right. So, it is very easy, right. So, if you substitute s is equal to j omega, why we are substituting s is equal to j omega? Because we want the root locus plot and the intersection point of root locus plot with the j omega axis. It is very, very known question to every sincere gate aspirant, okay. And I am considering you all as the champions, right. So, I may not be able to discuss from the too much basics, but you will love it, okay. So, when I substitute s is equal to j omega and rearrange this, then you will understand that k is equal to 6 and omega is equal to root 2 radians per second, right. I myself have done many times this one, right. So, therefore, here I can say k is equal to 6 and therefore, here this is also k is equal to 6 only. Correct, k is equal to 6 and what is the value here? j into root 2 you are going to have here and here you will be having minus j into root 2 here. Correct or not? Now, I want to ask a question to you. Think logically and tell me. Aravind, you also think logically and tell me. Every one of you. Suppose, if I place at k is equal to 1, what could be the three poles you are going to have at k is equal to 1? Any one of you? Substitute k is equal to 1. If I substitute k is equal to 1, what you will going to get here? So, it will become like s cube plus 3s square plus, <coughs> of course, 2s plus 1, that is equal to 0, correct? That is equal to 0. Now, tell me what would be the three poles that you are going to get here, right? I have already done it for that. So, let me take those values so that the things will be fast. So, if you solve this, you will going to have three poles. Of course, three root locus branches are there means three poles you will be having. First pole is minus 2.32 and the second pole is going to be, of course, this is going to be minus 0.33 plus j into, right, j into 0 
and the third pole is going to be complex conjugate of this one that is minus 0.33 minus j into 0.56 so you may be asking a question sir why you are doing all this test when the question is about gain margin and phase margin correct so many of the students who are attending my classes regularly you will understand the connectivity of different topics only after 5 to 10 minutes so wait for that right so please look at that when we have three poles here what should i say where is the first pole here so minus 2.32 may be here correct so that means this is the pole especially when i have k is equal to 1 here correct and similarly there is another pole s2 and s3 minus 0.33 plus j into 0.56 so i am very sure somewhere here right so let us say or else uh, minus 0.33 yes somewhere here and this is somewhere here correct so therefore i can say clearly that when the k is equal to six uh, i mean like k is equal to one one of the pole is lying here and again another pole closed loop system pole it is lying here k is equal to one clearly and k is equal to one one pole is lying here now you tell me when k is equal to one especially the roots of the characteristic equation are lying in the complex plane or not in the nickel passion of art you must tell me when k is equal to one whether the roots are lying or the <laughs> poles of the closed loop system lying on the imaginary axis or not yes or no k is equal to one yes of course clearly you can see here right so clearly you can see when k is equal to one one pole is here another pole is here correct so and one pole is here all three poles are there in the left half of s plane correct so clearly i can say yes k is equal to one the closed loop system the closed loop control system is stable because all roots of the characteristic equation they lie in the left half of s plane but what happens when k is equal to six here can you think logically when k is equal to six what will going to happen k is equal to six i can say the closed loop control system what will happen at k is equal to 6, I must say one pole is lying here and another pole is lying here and of course another pole, uh, pole is almost at far away. So I can say there are two dominant poles lying on the j omega axis. So it looks like a marginally stable system. Very good, Nickel. So it is going to be, let me write down marginally stable as m dot stable, marginally stable system. Clear? So this is thing. And if I ask a question that at k is equal to 10, what will going to happen? Any one of you? at k is equal to 10 what will going to happen k is equal to 10 obviously one pole might be here here so let us say at k is equal to 10 here so this is k is equal to 10 of course this will be somewhere here here so let us say k is equal to 10 here and one more pole might be far away here right so when k is equal to 10 yes of course the closed loop control system is going to be unstable let me write down unstable as like this clear unstable right so now what you must ask a question here is sir these things are fine but in what way this is connected to the gain margin and phase margin now i will explain that just try to understand that okay so yes right side now let me move ahead and show you general procedure of the gain margin and phase margin it just takes one minute to me please see here so what is the procedure of uh, you know finding the gain margin and phase margin first of all we will consider the open loop system here right so let us say we will going to consider uh, s is equal to replacement or uh, s is equal to j omega that means we will replace s is equal to j omega after that we will consider the magnitude clearly as equal to uh, you know modulus of g of j omega into h of j omega this is all the way fundamentals every time we will do the same thing right and then we will find phi which is nothing but the phase of course the phase of this function would be written as phase of g of j omega into h of j omega but how do we calculate the gain margin how do you get the gain margin we will get the gain margin which is called as a k in general so gain margin could be written as k right or we can even say that kg which is equal to 1 divided by right i hope you all must be knowing this there is a logic also behind this i will explain in today's lecture so modulus of g of j omega pc into h of j omega pc and where omega pc is the frequency at which the phase is equal to minus 180 degrees i repeat omega pc is the frequency of the input signal at which the phase is equal to minus 180 degrees now moving ahead to the next one that is if you want the phase margin look at that phase margin how do we write the phase margin 
that is equal to 180 degrees plus 5 gc here clear so 5 gc is actually nothing but the phase at gain crossover frequency clear in short people do right like this also 180 degrees plus the phase at gain crossover frequency should be written as phase at omega gc here see i know that majority of you know this however it is my responsibility to explain all these things with the basics isn't it now let's see what this actually concept is speaking with us because the question is find the gain margin and phase margin at k is equal to 1 6 10 now from these three questions we will get at least 10 to 15 questions so please listen till the end okay now can anybody say when i have the k in k is equal to 1 at k is equal to 1 at k is equal to 1 if i substitute k is equal to 1 then what would be g of s into h of s here so g of s into h of s simply like 1 by s into s plus 1 into s plus 2 here so let's move on to here yes then i can say confidently that g of s into h of s is equal to 1 divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 2 of course if i substitute j omega g of j omega into h of j omega what it will come here it will simply come like 1 divided by j omega into 1 plus j omega undoubtedly into 2 plus j omega isn't it now if you find the magnitude of this function so that is let me write down the magnitude here so magnitude is equal to modulus of g of j omega into h of j omega how much you will be getting here so you will be getting here modulus of j of j omega into h of j omega that will be equal to clearly written as 1 divided by omega under root of 1 plus omega square of course it must be under root of 4 plus omega square as i was feeling that it is a champion series you must know how to calculate the magnitude if you are in the month of july or june i must have i might have explained these steps also okay now what is going to be the phase here so the phase i can say in fact this is nothing but the phase of the function look at this so phase of the function i can say all the way this is equal to now 1 by s is there so it will be like minus 90 degrees and minus tan inverse of omega and minus tan inverse of omega by 2 now nikhil arvind reddy saumya bal and all other people whoever are there in the live chat whoever are there in the live chat comment on this clearly what is the value of omega gc here can you tell me what is the value of omega gc first of all what is the value of omega pc look at that if you want omega pc how we will do that so the phase must be equal to minus 180 degrees right so that means at omega pc i should say that the phase must be equal to minus 180 degrees so it is very straightforward right so the phase is minus 90 degrees minus tan inverse of omega of course minus tan inverse of omega by 2 if i equate this to uh, you know minus 180 degrees how can i write this one it is so simple you can take this minus 90 to this side so if you take it that way what will going to hit so i can remove this all the way this will be removed here of course this will be removed now and here i can keep 90 degrees here right so let me make it clearly so this will become like 90 degrees here and if we apply tan on both sides what would be the value of omega you will going to get you will going to get omega is equal to root 2 radian per second and this is the key of the problem here so omega pc in fact omega pc is root 2 radians per second wait this is absolutely okay but if i want omega gc what should i say at omega gc at omega gc the magnitude of the function that is modulus of g of j omega gc into h of j omega gc it must be equal to 1 right so it must be equal to 1 let me take it here so this is the magnitude function and if i make it e equal to 1 so what we will going to get 1 divided by omega gc right into under root of 1 plus omega gc square into under root of 4 plus omega gc square here all put together this will be equal to 1 correct or not so from this can you calculate what is omega gc arvind or nikhil you have to do it fast right so what is the value of omega gc omega gc will come down to be anyway i have done it for you so it will come down to be equal to 0 0.44 radian per second correct radian per second now i would like to ask a question omega gc and omega pc which is more which is less right which is more which is less right so i am asking once again the question omega pc and omega gc which is more and which is less one second i can say in this particular case omega pc definitely it will be greater than 
Omega GC. Is it it? Correct or not? <laughs> Every one of you. Guys, where are you? Arvind Reddy and Pesh Nafat and Nikhil and, you know, Soumya Bala and Isha Agarwal. Please let me know. So, Omega GC is 0 0.44 and Omega PC is more than Omega GC. Now, the question is, what is the gain margin here now? Now, let me think one step beyond this and show it to you the maximum beautiful points here. So, gain margin which is considered as a kg that would be equal to how much here? So, 1 divided by modulus of g of j omega pc right into h of j omega pc here. Correct? h of j omega pc. Now, what it will going to become? Can you get it now? So, what will going to happen now? When you write like this, you have to take wherever omega is there, substitute omega pc and reverse this. Why? It was written like 1 by this one. So, whatever the function we have here, you have to take 1 divided by this. Then it will come like omega pc, of course, into under root of 1 plus omega pc square and of course, it will be like 4 plus omega pc square. Now, we have value of omega pc. How much we have? Value of omega pc is root 2. Substitute there. How much you will going to get? It will become like root 2 into root, you know, uh, 3 here. Of course, it will be root 6. All the way, it will be equal to 6. Clear? So, the gain margin is equal to 6. Tell me, is it clear to every one of you? If say, <coughs> if it is clear, please let me know. Yes or no. So, gain margin is equal to 6 here. Therefore, gain margin in dB all the way. What should I say here? Gain margin in dB, it would be equal to 20 log of 6 here. So, 20 log of 6, if I say, what would be the value you will going to get here? Once again, yes, 15.56 dB you will going to get. 15.56 dB you will going to get. Clear? So, after this much of clarity, one thing we know that gain margin calculation leads to what? 15.56 dB. So, instead of writing all these things, now what I do is, let me erase this and straight away tell you clearly here. So, the gain margin, either 6 we can say, right? So, Kz is equal to 6 or in dB it will be 15.56 dB. Just give me one minute, you will have beautiful points ahead. So, please have confidence on me and wait till the end. Clear? This is 6 and gain margin in dB as I was saying here, that would be equal to how much? So, that is equal to 15.56 dB here. Well, very practical approach. Correct? And now look at other side of this, what would be the phase margin here? So, the phase margin if you look at, as I was saying phase margin is equal to 180 degrees plus 5 GC. Correct? So, 180 degrees plus 5 GC means, of course, this must be taken here, but at omega GC. So, what we should do here now? So, it is 5 GC means minus 90 degrees and minus tan inverse of omega uh, GC here and minus tan inverse of omega GC by 2 here. So, do you have the value of omega GC here? Yes, we have the value of omega GC. Where is the omega GC value? Here, correct? Now, put that omega GC here in the expression, then I am very sure you will going to get phase margin. Anybody can calculate this? Can you calculate guys? So, when you substitute omega GC here, what would be the phase margin you will be getting? You will be getting like 53.8 degrees. I have already done it. So, let me use that directly because it will take a lot of time to you. Okay. 53.8 degree. What is the conclusion you are going to get Nikhil Jain here? Look at that. In short, can I say important conclusions here in the box here? So, let me take this box and mention the important conclusion here. So, please see. Yes, the very first thing is gain margin, right? So, gain margin, we got like a positive quantity, 15.56 dB, of course. And what is the phase margin? Phase margin, we got it here as 53.8 degree here, correct? 53.8 degree. Now, Look at this way in the root locus plot. Now try to understand when k is equal to 1, right? Exactly when the closed loop poles are here, we are understanding two things here. Gain margin and phase margin both are positive here, right? So therefore, I can say clearly here gain margin and phase margin. Gain margin and phase margin both are greater than 0 here. Clear? Both are greater than 0 and omega pc, right? So, successfully omega PC is more than omega GC. Therefore, we call this particular system as a stable system. Why? Why we call this as a stable system? Because the roots of the characteristic equation are lying in the left half of S plane. Clear? 
so therefore we can say this closed loop system as stable system that means it is a stable closed loop system clear however we analyzed and made it as a stable closed loop system from the open loop transfer function clear now are you able to correlate both root locus as well as the gain margin and phase margin tell me yes or no so here we understood that yes when you take this value gain margin and phase margin values are coming like this and when you go back to the root locus i was able to understand when k is equal to 1 gain margin and phase margin both are positive here of course here or here anywhere you can mention tell me nikhil is it clear arvind ready so far or am i moving little bit fast here so yes maybe i am moving little bit fast because i am assuming that you guys are capable here right so please let me know if i am moving too fast now moving ahead so what would be the next question here have you seen the next question here <laughs> right right very good very good one second a small call a uh, very important one just hello yes sir sir i am in live anything ajay yeah yeah right so that's how actually uh, you know gain margin and phase margins are successfully used uh, to find out the stability of closed loop system without even plotting the root locus but however the information what we retrieve or what we will take from both it will going to be same right now let me go one step beyond that and show it to you clearly what happens if k is equal to 6 then you will really see the magic here so please see when k is equal to 6 so can you guys uh, guess uh, guess what will going to happen so everything remains same this total calculation remains same here right what will going to change because i am very sure that the omega pc right it will going to become first of all <laughs> in this case uh, if you look, go back and see right so what will be your modulus of j of j omega because now when k is equal to 6 uh, your magnitude i can say which is equal to modulus of j of j omega into h of j omega what it will become it will be simply equal to have you seen now k instead of 1 we must have 6 here correct so therefore move ahead and write down this 6 divided by i can say clearly like omega under root of 1 plus omega square of course under root of 4 plus omega square excellent and look at the phase here now it is really interesting when you calculate the phase here without any second thought i can say phase of j of j omega into h of j omega it will be equal to minus 90 degrees and minus tan inverse of omega and minus tan inverse of omega by 2 this remains same correct omega by 2 now the great part is look at that when you are changing the gain k here what is omega pc now we all know that at omega is equal to omega pc right at frequency is equal to this what should happen the phase must be equal to minus 180 degrees right once again if you calculate omega pc by equating the phase is equal to minus 180 degrees same calculation you will going to encounter here correct so therefore i can quickly say that it will not change that it will become root to radian per second only clear it will become root to radian per second without affecting what does it mean when you change the static gain here or when you change the controller gain here omega pc will not going to affect this means that when we have amplifier in the forward path or as only proportional controller proportional controller will not affect on the omega pc clear it will not affect on the omega pc but the most beautiful point is what will be the omega gc now so at omega is equal to omega gc right so i must say the magnitude should be equal to one so that means i should say the modulus of g of j omega gc into h of g omega gc i am very sure that it must be equal to one right so now make it this equal to 1 6 divided by omega gc of course into under root of 1 plus omega gc square and under root of 4 plus omega gc square here and that must be equal to how much so this should be equal to 1 and i am very sure if you calculate you will going to get omega gc is equal to how much here so omega gc is equal to root 2 radian per second am i right here oh you have you guys have already given the answer omega gc is equal to root 2 radian per second here and most important point what you must understand here is right now it's a great thing that both omega pc and omega gc both are same here correct omega pc and omega gc both are same but look at what would be the gain margin now right gain margin as well as phase margin right so because as 
we are getting the magnitude is equal to 1 and phase is equal to minus 180 degrees at the same frequency called root 2 radian per second. Obviously, there is no margin available, right? So, anyway, if you want, you can calculate the gain margin by using the conventional formula here, which is equal to 1 divided by, of course, modulus of g of j omega pc and h of j omega pc. What does it mean? It's simple. Take this magnitude here. This is now with 6. You need to take with 6, right? So, if you calculate this, you will going to get, because omega pc is already known to you. Omega pc is root 2 radian per second. Therefore, if you put it clearly, it will come simply like 1. So, if kz is equal to 1, so the gain margin in dB will be how much? So, the gain margin in dB, I can say 20 log of 1, which is actually nothing but 0 dB here. Clear? Gain margin is equal to 0 dB. What about the phase margin here? So, the phase margin, as we all know that this is equal to 180 degrees, of course, plus 5 GC here, isn't it? So, what is this value? 180 degrees and when we take 5 GC. So, what is 5 GC here? So, <laughs> of course, this is going to be your phase at omega GC we need to take. So, therefore, I can say all the way plus minus 90 degrees and minus tan inverse of omega GC and minus tan inverse of omega GC by 2. And those who have a minimum common sense, they will understand that. When we calculate this by equating to minus 180, we got root 2. And when we go back and substitute root 2 here, you will going to get minus 180 degrees only, right? So, all put together, it will going to become 0 degree. Now, what I want to ask here is, after this much of elaborated and clear explanation, can you tell me what is happening here? Gain margin becomes 0 dB here, correct? And phase margin is becoming like 0 degree, isn't it? So, therefore, I can say, all put together here, phase margin is equal to 0 degree and gain margin is equal to 0 degree. It means that you do not have any margin to add to the system. You are already uh, reached into the unstable situation. Clear? So, this is actually called as a marginally stable system as Aravind is saying. And marginally stable system, which is marginally stable? Closed loop or open loop? Nickel. I am asking you nickel, passion of heart. Whether I am calling, I mean marginally stable, I agree. But whether that is a closed loop system or open loop system, that you must answer here, correct? So, the idea is simple because in phase margin and gain margin, we evaluate the stability of, uh, of closed loop control system by taking the open loop system, clear? By taking the open loop system, we will find out what is the stability of the closed loop system, clear? Now, look at the root locus plot. Don't miss it. So, that means I am very sure when k is equal to 6 here, especially when k is equal to 6, it means that here pm and gm, that means phase margin and gain margin is equal to 0. So, what does it mean? Root locus is saying that you are on the j omega axis. j omega axis is actually the boundary between the stability and unstability, correct? So, it is saying that when you put controller gain k is equal to 6, you will be reaching to the border condition, you cannot add any margins here. So, therefore, closed loop system is called as a marginally stable system. Interesting here. Now, look at the other way around it. Okay. So, other way around it means in simple language, if you go one step ahead, let us put k is equal to 10 here. And uh, can you guys, you please tell me what is going to be omega gc and omega pc now? Now, when we keep k is equal to 10 again, what would be the magnitude here? First of all, magnitude would be equal to modulus of j omega pc into h of, uh, sorry, modulus of j omega, I am extremely sorry. <coughs> so, this will be equal to j omega into h of j omega. Now, it should be written like 10 divided by omega into under root of 1 plus omega square into 4 plus omega square. Look at how many conclusions you can draw from a single question, isn't it? Such a beautiful question, correct or not? So, and what about the phase here? So, phase when you look at here, of course, I can say phase of this function would be written something like this. So, please see here. It will be again minus 90 degrees and minus tan inverse of omega, right? And minus tan inverse of omega by 2. It will not change, right? As long as the phase is not changing, as long as the phase is not changing, even now also I can write down omega pc is equal to root 2 radian per second. But if you calculate omega gc, how you will going to get uh, omega gc? At omega is equal to omega gc, as I was saying that the magnitude must be equal to 1. So, modulus of g of j omega gc into h of j omega gc, of course, as I was saying that it must be equal to 1. Now, equate this equal to 1, right? So, yes, very good Arvind, very fast. 
Nikhil, where are you? Are you able to answer these things? Now, when we make it here, 10 divided by omega GC into under root of 1 plus omega GC square here and under root of 4 plus omega GC square. Correct? Now, look at that what will going to happen. If I equate it to equal to 1, right? What would be the omega GC value? Can you tell me omega GC value? Omega GC value, now it will going to become like, I have made it for you. It is 1.8 radian per second. See, these are algebra. I can't do this much of low level math. So anyway, omega GC is equal to 1.8 radian per second. Now this means that categorically it is saying that omega PC is root 2 radian per second. Omega GC is going to be equal to 1.8 radian per second. This means that we can say right now omega PC is less than omega GC here. Let us see what will going to happen now. If it really happens like this, what is the gain margin and phase margin? Can you tell me? Now the gain margin I can say which is equal to kg right which is equal to 1 divided by modulus of g of j omega pc into h of j omega pc right. So that means you have to take this here and 1 divided by this substitute omega pc. What is the value you will be getting here? You will be getting like 6 by 10 so that is nothing but 0 0.6 here. If you want you can check that right. So 20 log of this what is the gain margin in db now? Now gain margin in db it will be equal to 20 logarithmic of 0.6 here undoubtedly you will going to get what negative. So let us see yes it is mentioned like minus 4.43 db here clear. I want to show you how beautifully all these concepts are connected together right. So this is okay. What about the phase margin here now? Now the phase margin can be written as 180 degrees of course plus 5 gc as I was saying. So therefore I can say. 180 degrees plus minus 90 degrees and minus tan inverse of omega gc here and minus tan inverse of omega gc by 2 also isn't it omega gc by 2 also now when i substitute omega gc there because omega gc is already known to you 1.8 radian per second then what you will going to get substitute everything you will going to get the phase margin here and phase margin will come like minus 12.93 degrees here clear so such an interesting concept here right so both gain margin and phase margin i can say both are negative here right so gain margin and phase margin of course both are negative quantities right so now let us see what does it mean if k is actually greater than 10 so what is the idea here so look at that so k is greater than 10 so k is 10 so k is 10 k is 10 so at k is equal to 10 just now i told you that both gain margin and phase margin both are coming less than 0 clear what does it mean if both are coming less than 0 it inherently means that it is already unstable okay so it is already unstable but how it is showing root log as plot it is saying that when k is equal to 10 the roots of the characteristic equation they are coming onto the right hand side of the s plane so therefore i can say the closed loop control system is unstable is it interesting arvind have you got any new i mean you got a clarity of connection between the root locus and gain margin and phase margin nickel aravind passion of heart isha agarwal let me know clearly so finally the ultimate conclusion we can say the very first conclusion is omega pc if it is more than omega gc i can say of course this will lead to what if it happens here then i must agree with the fact that automatically gain margin and phase margin both will going to be positive gain margin and phase margin are positive quantities clear or positive right so now the most beautiful point is in case if omega pc and omega gc both are same then we will left with no margin here so margin will not be there because you already reached to the j omega axis closed loop poles are reach into the j omega axis that's the boundary so we cannot add anything so it will be zero clear so both are equal to zero in their respective birth. of course in in fact uh, it will be zero db and zero degree respectively if you want me clearly to write okay respectively right however the most uh, uh, important condition is omega pc is greater than sorry omega pc is less than omega gc here clear omega pc is actually less than omega gc in that case can you tell me what will going to happen then obviously gain margin and phase margin both are negative both are negative clear in first case the system is in the first case closed loop control system is 
hundred percent stable here. Clear? And here closed loop control system is marginally stable. Clear? Marginally stable. And in the last case, closed loop control system is unstable. This is how these concepts came into the picture. And most of the people they use like this. Okay? But majority of the people they don't know what is the background of this. The background is the root locus. In fact, you can find the background in any way because as I said, in control system, all topics will be connected at the end. Clear? So whether you use the root uh, Routh Harvich criteria, whether you use the root locus, whether you use the gain margin, phase margin, whether you use polar plot, Bode plot, Nyquist plot, anything you do, ultimately you will understand that in the previous question, K must be equal to 6 here. Clear? That is the boundary condition. Right? Now, I hope you got the fundamental logics very clearly. Now moving ahead, let me go to the one more question here. This question is not a difficult question. But I just want to, uh, you know, see how you are going to do this one. Can anyone make it here? Consider the Bode magnitude plot shown in the figure. The transfer function of the system is dash, right? So four options are there here. So try to find out which is the correct option here. Every one of you, right? <coughs> so can you guess which is going to be the correct answer here? Right. So the first thing is whenever you find this kind of question, identify what are the poles and zeros here, right? So it is anyway on logarithmic axis this is the omega value so at omega is equal to 1 before omega is equal to 1 this is a flat slope so it is 0 db per decade right and here what is the slope of this line so the slope of this line is look at from 1 to 10 1 to 10 how many times the frequency is increased 1 to 10 the frequency increased is 1 decay correct 1 decay frequency is increased good so when frequency is increased 1 decay what was the gain that is increasing here? So minus 20 dB to 0. That means addition of plus 20 has taken. Correct? In 1 decay, the gain is increased from minus 20 dB to 0 dB. Therefore, its slope can be written as a plus 20 dB per decade here. Clear? So let me write down per decade here. Right? However, and here, what it is? what is this slope? This slope is 0 dB because it is a flat line. So for decade, so let me write down decade as DEC here and of course it is minus 20 dB per decade. So what would be the correct answer? Nikhil and Arvind you are writing and erasing. What would be the correct answer here? Can you tell me? Right. <laughs> so the first thing is you must understand at omega is equal to 1 the slope is changed from 0 dB to plus 20 dB. That means the slope is increased. If the slope is increased then I can say or the slope change is positive here. Correct? So, 0 dB became like 20 dB means that is happens only with the 0 of first order. Correct? So, that means there is a 0 of first order. Clear? And similarly, at 10 what happened? At 10 the slope is changed from 20 dB to 0 dB. What does it mean? Slope decreased from 20 dB it became 0 dB. What does it mean? It means that there is a scope to have pole of order 1 here. Clear? And again at 100 what is happening? At 100 it is coming from 0 dB per decade to minus 20 dB per decade. What does it mean? Again the slope is reduced by 20 dB per decade. That means here also we have pole of order 1 here. Clear? So now go back and see poles and zeros combination. That may give some answer to you. Just let us see here where it is possible here. So pole should, 0 should be 1. So 0 should be 1. Of course only in one option it is there. Option C is the correct answer. So in fact this is a very simple question. In fact, I have done most calculation, but it is a very, very simple question. That's why I think Arvind is laughing here. So anyway, this was, uh, I mean like, this was not a, a very great question if you go with the options. And of course, you must also think with respect to options also. Okay. So smart people actually, they use the options, elimination method. So anyway, this is a classical procedure. However, if you want to know what is the DC gain, how do we get the DC gain? Because we don't have any poles at origin here. So I can say 20 log K that will be directly equal to minus 20 here. So then you will going to get the value of k directly. So that k will be equal to in this case, which will be equal to 1 by 10. And that is what actually it was written here 1 by 10. Clear? Now I want to give one question homework to you and look at this question. And this question is also a good question. Now, in fact, if you are clever enough by looking at the question itself, you must answer. Now, Aravind, let me know what is the correct answer here. Any one of you? Any one of you. <laughs> so look at, so the question is the asymptotic Bode plot of a open loop control system with k greater than 0 and all poles and zeros 
on the left hand side of the S plane is shown the minimum phase angle contribution of G of S is given by dash. Clear? So, what would be the minimum angle that can be given by this? This is uh, assumed to be one of the simple question, right? No, sorry, one of the good question, <laughs> right? So, any one of you, right? Sir, you said and writing and arranging, that's why I have lost it. Okay, okay, okay. Sir, you said writing. <laughs> okay, nice, nice, no problem, right? So, anyway, <laughs> is the concepts are clear up to now, Arvind? So, now look at what we have to do in this particular case is we must technically apply our brain. Look at that. It is a flat curve which is decreasing like this, correct? Unfortunately, we must agree with the fact that it is a decreasing curve like this and it was mentioned like minus 40 dB per decade. What does it mean? It means that your G of S into H of S, that is asymptotic Bode plot open loop function, it will go into how? K divided by S square, correct? So, because the pole at origin, the pole set origin, not origin only will going to give the decaying slope, minus 40 dB per decade. After that, if you see at omega is equal to 1, minus 40 dB per decade, it moved to where? Minus 20 dB per decade. What does it mean? Minus 40 dB to minus 20 dB. So, the slope is increased, correct? Slope is increased. It means that we are having what? 0 of order 1 here, isn't it? 0 of order 1 because minus 40 became like minus 20 means plus 20 is added to minus 40 plus 20 is added to minus 40 then only the net will become minus 20 correct so we have 0 of order 1 here and look at what is there here anyway omega c here is it the corner frequency no why the same you know if you look at the same slope is there from here to here correct when we have the same slope here we literally don't require to consider this omega c clear it is not required to consider this one now only the thing you need to consider this one 100 so what happens here at 100 at omega is equal to 100 i can say the slope is changed from minus 22 to minus 40 that means it is the pole of order one here correct it is a pole of order one now <coughs> here k by s square is there and zero it will be like s plus one here and pole what is the pole here? So, pole I can say, uh, yes, S plus, right, 100, whatever it may be, that is the fine thing, right, so there is a 0 and there is a pole. Now, Nikhil, sir, facing little bit difficulties because not revised these things from a long time, we will definitely revise today, good, good, very good, no problem, Nikhil, right, so that is why you need to be always update with the things, otherwise, you know, it is not uh, advisable to uh, just go with the multiple subjects even if you are going with the multiple subjects every time you should wrap up and keep the flow clearly that is more important for the exam now if you look at clearly wet as omega tends to infinity whatever the contribution of the phase that will be created by this that will go off with this clear so that means it will create a positive slope and it will create a negative slope correct so at omega tends to infinity both of these two will going to cancel what will be left here you will be having only 1 by s square, correct? So, then what you will going to have? That will lead to minus 180 degrees. Of course, if you want, you can write down this. Minus 180 degrees plus tan inverse of omega here, correct? And of course, tan inverse of omega and additional to that, we can even say plus, uh, sorry, minus this is, so one second, right? And I can say here, right? So, one second, minus tan inverse of omega by 100 here, correct? So, look at that. If you go with the omega is equal to infinity here, omega tends to infinity, I must say clearly that you will left with minus 180 degrees here, correct? So, option D is going to be the correct answer for this, clear? So, at omega tends to infinity, that is the phase that we will, we will going to left with that, clear? So, moving ahead to the next one, of course, this is a homework problem because I feel that you people are capable to do. In fact, this is a very easy question easy question and there are two polar plots are given for g1 of s and g2 of s this is the polar plot of g1 of s and this is the polar plot of g2 of s correct so <coughs> what happens is when you multiply this g1 of s and g2 of s phase of both will going to get added correct phase of both see when you multiply product of g1 of s and g2 of s product of g1 of s and g2 of s if you take of course the phase will be what if you take this is the g of s so now the phase of g of s obviously i can say g of s is equal to phase of g1 of s 
plus phase of G2 of S. That is what you will going to get. Now the most beautiful point is this plot all the way it has a phase. How much and this has what is the phase. So this plot has a phase of 90 degrees and this phase uh, this plot has a phase of minus 90 degrees. So 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees when you add obviously you will going to get what? Zero. Zero is going to be your phase. Right. So now you must select what would be the correct option here and mention in the comment box. Arvind ready what is going to be the correct option here. So when the phase of both the systems gets added then the net phase should become zero. That means your graph final graph must have phase only equal to zero. Only equal to zero and what would be the magnitude that you need to get here. So the interesting fact is here when the magnitude is increasing here the magnitude will going to decrease and when we multiply what should come here. So anyway I am sure that this would be wrong answer and this would be wrong answer correct. In these two you have to catch the correct one and keep it in the comment section this is a homework question to you clear. Now moving ahead to the last one of course this is also a good question let me show it to you here. So what is written here first of all. It is mentioned that the polar plot of type 1, okay, three poles open loop stable system. In fact, it's not mentioned, but let me give you stable system is shown in the figure. The closed loop system is dash. Clear? So the closed loop system is dash. So for this kind of question, especially if you apply the Nyquist stability criteria, what we need to do? First of all, you must construct the Nyquist plot for this. How do we construct the Nyquist plot? So let me explain you clearly here. So please see. So extend this here. So extend this obviously as I was saying. Clear. So extend all the way like this. When you extend this then take you know mirror image of this plot. So when we take the mirror image of this plot nickel carefully listen this one because this is a very very important topic. So when we take the mirror image of this one here right. So then obviously it looks like this correct mirror image is this. Then the easiest way is once you are able to write the or draw the mirror image just give me one second time just just give me one second time so the mirror image right so right this is mirror image when you write mirror image here right so please send telegram thing uh, yes avsr telegram link is ian guru Either you can plus like this or you can also mention like IN Guru 2022. Anything is fine. Okay. So then automatically you will going to get this one, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. So now you got something like this. But the most beautiful point is once you get the, uh, I mean like uh, mirror image here, simple way is start, <coughs> start with this. The end of the mirror image, consider this as a point one end of the mirror image consider that as a point one starting of the original graph you consider this as a second point starting of the original graph you consider this as a second point now the end of the first graph uh, sorry the end of the mirror image and the starting of the original graph both should be come connected with the infinite rate so infinite radius so this is the only way you need to connect with the infinite radius in clockwise direction infinite radius in clockwise direction. So this is the only way we can do it correct and this is a shortcut to draw the Nyquist plot. However, those people who want exact way to uh, draw the uh, Nyquist plot and all the concepts of Nyquist plot deeply I have covered in Baiju's exam prep app and if you are already Baiju student you can see my recorded lectures where I took the background of the Nyquist stability criteria, what do you mean by Nyquist criterion, how it will be applicable for control system, what do you mean by mapping and all these things I have extensively discussed. But what we, I have done today is the shortcut. That is just take the mirror image of that, end of the mirror image and the starting of the original graph, both should be connected in the clockwise direction with the infinite radius. However, you must also understand this, see, so once you, uh, can, I mean like if the directions are coming like this, of course the original graph direction is like this only. This is the original graph direction, correct? And reverse is going to be this now. So reverse I can say, this is going to be the reverse. Now that is the way you will be able to connect everything together, correct? So this is the way how you can connect everything together. Now I have a question to you, how do we identify the stability of the closed loop system? So simple here. So for example, 
I will take this a uh, little bit dark here like this. Great. So if you want to understand the stability of this closed loop system, look at minus one comma zero point on the JH plane. Clear? And draw a line like this. Clear? Draw a line like this. Now you tell me this line was intersected by how many times? Two times. Right? So this is one time. Right? So this is the direction and this is second time. Correct? So two times it is intersected and two times it is a clockwise time. Right? So according to Nyquist stability criteria, we can write down P minus Z, the number of anti-clockwise encirclements around minus 1 comma 0 point i repeat number of anti-clockwise encirclements around minus 1 comma 0 it should be given actually is equal to capital n clear but this n is actually nothing but anti-clockwise encirclements clear but right now how many encirclements are there simple i told you that draw a line like this <laughs> draw a line like this and once you draw the line then see how many times it is cutting one and second time is cutting this way both are actually clockwise correct so therefore i can say clearly that p minus z is equal to 2 correct p minus, p minus z is equal to minus 2 why minus 2 because there are two clockwise encirclements and n is anti clockwise so that's why i made like minus 2 here now moving ahead to the previous thing it was mentioned clearly that open loop system is stable if open loop system is stable then i can say p is equal to 0 correct because p is actually nothing but the number of poles of open loop system that lies in the right hand side of the s plane as the open loop system is stable now p will be zero and therefore from here i can say zero minus z that would be equal to minus two of course minus minus will be cancelled then z will be equal to two what do you mean by that z is equal to two it means that the number of closed loop system poles that lies in the right hand side of the s plane equals to 2 so going back to our question what is the answer here number of poles of the closed loop system that lies in the right hand side of the s plane equal to 2 so what would be the answer here option d is the correct answer that is unstable with the two poles on the right hand side of the s plane so in fact i have clearly mentioned the way how you should do and the same logic should be applied for any of the nyquist plot clear sir for just to want to decide no need of yes 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 critical point also we can say the problem with the critical point to understand the stability you don't require really to draw the nyquist plot but to understand how many poles are there on the right hand side or left hand side you require to write this of course there are many shortcuts are there but my intention here is to show you how you will apply the nyquist plot clear right yes 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 avs sir yes available so that's why I'm saying that in Baiju's exam prep, you can find the lectures and you can go through that. And there itself, you will going to get the notes as also. Clear? So that's all for the day, guys. So I have covered, most importantly, the purpose of this class, as I was saying, many students are repeatedly asking, sir, what is the connection between these root locus and gain margin and phase margin? I hope in today's session, I have made it very clearly and you guys have really enjoyed that. And I have covered the concepts related to body plot and polar plot if you want to solve somewhat more deep questions good level of questions as you all have been seeing from the last two three classes so the level of questions what i am discussing so if you want that kind of questions you can find it in the telegram channel if you request me i will upload the document so that you can practice that and if you have any doubts you can always reach out to me so hope you really enjoyed with this yes arvind today after this class i will send it to you the pdfs so in, once again, I am saying that if you have any demand, particularly in any concept of control system, you can freely ask in the Telegram channel or Telegram a group. Then I will go into uh, take the YouTube sessions only on that particular topic. So all the best. And tomorrow, tomorrow by 6 p.m. we'll again meet together and discuss the concepts related to the compensator and controllers and state space analysis. Till then, take care. Bye bye.